no energy or no frequency then it is uh, an anti matter and uh, what has been observed uh, uh, through the modern science no energy uh, or no frequency then it is is everything okay can everybody hear me right hello yes we can hear you thank you yeah okay so uh, everybody has dealt uh, aromas in form of uh, one way or the other whether we are eating fruit or we are uh, tasting something or something is being cooked in the house we are we are having a cup of coffee so aromas are uh, one of the methods or one of the uh, substances that we come across in terms of uh, smell and odor and which is also a form of energy uh, what our scripture used to say that uh, when we meet somebody who is like a sage or somebody who has got high energy level is always attractive uh, his voice has got a command his persona has got uh, charisma or attraction about it so uh, normally uh, that was not understood in terms of science so uh, new studies were done and uh, there was uh, a bruce ronin who discovered something that uh, human body has a frequency of 60 to 68 hertz now when it is hertz is basically a count on how much an energy is uh, resonating or oscillating so it's a measure and uh, if our human body uh, hertz count falls below 58 we start to fall sick and by it reach that time it drops to 25 then it is almost uh, there is no energy to keep the body going and uh, then it is form of when we say there is no life in the human body so difference uh, you might have the organ you might have the blood you might have the cells but uh, what is lost is the energy uh, in very simple perspective uh, this is what the energy is something which connects between uh, matter to and give life to it so when we are eating uh, fruits uh, it uh, helps us elevate our energies when uh, we are uh, having a, a good conversation or a good thought uh, it increases our energy level by approximately 12 uh, hertz uh, if you are meditating or uh, resonating at a high level then it can uh, go up to by 15% uh, what nature has given us bountiful is these natural elements uh, in forms of fruits vegetables and they concentrate uh, we can get in form of the aroma oil till this part is everybody on the same page is everything uh understandable yes thank you okay so uh what uh what i was uh, trying to explain in the previous uh conversation that we were having is that if we are able to use these nature's uh, bountiful uh, miracle uh, elixirs uh, in form of Uh, aroma oils uh, we can help increase our own energy level our own hertz our own um, count of energy now uh, one of the greatest uh, frequencies or energy levels is found in rose oil which is almost 320 hertz so if we add a form of rose oil or any oil if everybody can see that i have got an oil if we apply on part of a different body around our neck on the different endocrine glands where they are positioned the uh, count will go up and uh, it is uh, quite instant uh, we can also do it in terms of the food that we eat uh, there are certain foods which are uh, uh, positive which are called sattvic foods there are certain called uh, uh tamasic food which it will take the energy out of your body and uh, and like that 
so this is what the uh, essential oil everybody has dealt uh, in some way or the other so today what we will talk about how our scriptures have mentioned the importance of these aromas and, and fragrances in uh, in our in our scriptures so So we are. So, like uh, a music would uh, touch our heart, uh, aroma and fragrances have special places in our mind. Uh, with the right aroma, it can help you focus. It can help you concentrate, and it will uh, make you feel peaceful. Uh, when we are doing uh, meditation, or we go to an area which has got very nice smell or odor, it. it will make your body or physically and mentally come to a more composed form and we when we have an odor which is not uh, repulsive in nature or uh, dirty or uh, uh, woking then we we are uh, out of our own uh, energy level will uh, start to drop or uh, get hampered and that is uh, witness in form of irritability uh in forms of uh, burst of anger in forms of restlessness and in forms of anxiety okay is everybody there yes okay so uh throughout history uh fragrance oil spices uh, aromas Uh, have been used by different uh, cultures uh, in india in greece uh, in romans uh, in uh, different civilizations uh, mesopotamia uh, china and uh, they have they realized that uh, especially the egypt uh, that uh, there are various methods in uh, by power of observation that you could use these uh, nature's uh, uh, gifts Uh, to boost our uh, own uh, body uh, and spirit so uh, first i will start because majority of us are indians our relatability to uh, the indian mythology and indian uh, text and scriptures is uh, quite prominent so we would start with uh, with the hindu mythology first now uh, as per rigveda uh, which is almost like say more than 7000 years old it's one of the oldest recorded uh, human uh, scriptures and uh, it talks about uh, the power of essence aroma and perfumes in uh, in form of spiritual connection in forms of human connections uh, in forms of healing uh, and also some sort of mystique and alchemy now the goddess of uh, aroma and perfume in the hindu scriptures is gandeshwari if you look at the word and break it is gandeshwari gand means smell like the nose of fragrance and ishwari is uh, the female goddess or she is uh, you might be wondering why i am taking you through the scriptures is that a lot of our scriptures have given symbolism or given some uh, very mild versions for us to to look at and to uh, get an understanding so i'm trying to explain that in the hindu scriptures so uh, this goddess is holding uh, the lotus in one hand and a perfume bottle in another she is uh, also uh, uh, connected to the uh, god of earth and also uh, the king now goddess is uh, this goddess is worshiped in different parts of india uh, by people who want to have uh, special uh, powers to uh, for the uh, aroma the perfumers uh, a lot of the florists and uh, this is also to ward off uh, diseases and bad smells now a uh, very old or prominent astronomer mathematician astrologer was born in the 6th century in the city of ujjain that's a city in uh, madhya pradesh 
His name was Varha Mihira. Uh, if you would uh, look, look at a uh, lot of uh, scriptures have been written uh, by Varha Mihira. Uh, he has also dis uh, discovered a lot of uh, constellations and uh, zodiacs. Uh, in, in his uh, scripture called the Bhrat Samhita, he has described uh, different effects of aroma, how it can help us. So they are categorized as first one, Shukra, which is basically stimulating, Madha, which has got to do with the mind, Bala, which is basically got to do with the strength, physical strength, Arogya, which is basically to do with physical well-being, Kranti or Kanti is basically physical beauty or cosmetic value, and Harsha, joyousness. So these are basically how perfume affects in it in different forms. One of the uh, oldest scriptures and the most common scriptures that we would uh, we hear about uh, on a daily life is uh, the epic Ramayana or uh, uh, the story about uh, the scriptures would narrate about uh, Mata Sita and uh, Lord uh, Ram. In this, uh, a very prominent uh, part is when Sita is, uh, uh, they are in, doing, in their vanvas uh, and uh, she looks at a golden deer called the Swarnahirana, uh, which is basically a demon Marichia who has uh, taken that form. And the reason why she gets enamored by this deer is because of beautiful fur and beautiful eyes and also the beautiful smell. It comes out of the kasturi, which is the navel of the deer. So, after she is kidnapped by Ravan and she's taken to Lanka, she is put in, a, in an area called the Ashok Vatika. Now, if you Everybody has heard about Ashok Vatika and everybody must have wondered what is the reason why prominence of Ashok Vatika when somebody who is as learned as Ravan had, could have put her in, uh, in her own uh, palace or at another place. But why is this mention of Ashok Vatika is there? Can anybody answer it or has some any guesses about it? I'm open to, uh, to this. Anyone? Hello. I don't think so, Manish ji. We have any clue. Okay. So, so uh, in very simple words, I will try to explain you how our scriptures try to explain things in a very mystifying and but still uh, uh, in a very beautiful symbol symbolic way. So, word Ashoka means a shok. If you break it, without shok, a shok without sorrow. Vatika means garden. So, a garden where there is no shok. So, Sita, who has just been kidnapped and is going through a, a mental trauma, has been put in an environment where the trees of Ashoka, also called the Pondol trees, have been planted. These trees have special qualities which are still used till this day in the modern uh, medication and the Ayurveda healing of the woman's health disorders like menstrual disorder, urinary tract in, uh, infections, uh, ovarian cyst. The bark of this Ashoka tree is, ha is having bioactive compounds like flavonoids and symponians and steroids and antioxidant uh, uh, properties, which are anti-inflammatory, uh, antipyretic, uh, analgesic, and also helps in controlling blood sugar, ulcers, and also purify blood. In very simple term, this area had a special medicinal quality to soothe the mind 
and take it away from the sorrow. The beautiful fragrance that this area had was filled with this aroma so that Sita, when she was in, in that uh, frame of mind, when she was longing for, for her uh, husband, uh, uh, Sri Ram, uh, she would, the fragrance would keep her in composed form. So Ashoka tree is also a symbol of love and happiness and fertility in the Indian culture. Uh, it, it, till this part, did everybody understand the importance of Ashoka Vatika? Uh, yes, thanks. Okay. Now I go to the second part of, of uh, the Ramayana, which everybody has heard and very important, is when uh, um, uh, Lakshman is injured in the battle uh, with uh, Meghanath and uh, a special fragrant or a tree or a Ayurvedic herb is needed to restore his good health, which is Sanjeevni Bhuti. It is also a form described in the Ayurveda as form of a herb which has got aromatic qualities. Then now I come to the another scripture, which is the Mahabharata. In Mahabharat, uh, Lord Krishna is uh, symbolized in form of uh, a young prince or a young boy who always wear a garland of roses. These roses uh, are also uh, symbolized in form of love, symbolized in form of adoration and deep connection with the divine. In, in the period uh, when the five brothers, the Pandavas, were given the Vanvas, uh, it is called the Sanatan Parva, uh, Arjun wanted to uh, get certain know-how of, of handling certain weapons, but his mind was not in the right state of mind. In that, uh, um, Rishi uh, Narad, uh, the Muni, the celestial sage, uh, came to Arjun and he offered him a garland of flowers, of, which was basically uh, an offering from uh, Lord Indra. And this garland had special power or the aroma, which would, which would help him composing his mind and enhance his concentration to learn these art forms of warfare. For a physical mind, we need a good physical body, uh, body and to get the best outcome, we need a clarity of thought. So these aroma or, or garland of aroma uh, helped him concentrate and get these learnings of using these different weapons. Now there are different flowers or mentions of different uh, essences or uh, aromas in, in the Mahabharata. One of the very uh, not so much heard of that uh, we, have, we have not really heard much about in, in the northern India is a uh, epic story of Madhvasena. Now Madhvasena in the old Indian scriptures is, uh, is a king who is cursed by a sage to turn into a woman. But when he uh, uh, gets this uh, curse, he urges uh, the saint to be a little uh, lenient on him for his... Uh, so he is also given a perfume where he had the opportunity to turn into the male original form once a month after the application of this perfume. Now, what has been written over here is very beautiful in terms of the, the power of Aroma. Is that he falls in love with this princess called the Malavati, and unaware of the secret, Malavati one day uh, gets enamored by this perfume and applies it, and she turns into a man. Now, uh, seeing this, Madhusena and uh, the change of uh, the sexes, uh, they. Uh, decide to remain in their opposite forms for the rest of their lives. 
So what it narrates is basically that besides the medicinal quality, the aroma also has aphrodisiac quality or qualities which can enhance or change the sex form of a person. Uh, we will talk about this in uh, in the Greek uh, mythology when we come to the uh, next uh, in few minutes. Uh, how aphrodisiac and how they are related to this uh, sexual orientation and sexual urges. Now I come to one of the most uh, important mantra in the Sanatan Dharma or the Hindu mythology, which is called the Mahamrityunjaya Mantra or the Rudra Mantra or Om Triyambakam Mantra. I'm, I'm sure that majority of us are from Indian background. They must have heard this Mahamrityunjaya Mantra. Uh, some of the other time I've heard about it or heard uh, great uh, reverence by people who are uh, followers of the Sanatan Dharma. Uh, the importance of this particular mantra. Anyone? Yes. Mahamrityam Maha Maha Bakam Yajam Hai. Yeah, yes. So, this mantra uh, has a special power which was uh, given to Lord uh, Sage Shukra, uh, which is basically uh, brightness or uh, for completing his mental and physical demand for the measure of the penance period that he was going through by Lord Shiva. And it is a reverence to Lord Shiva. Now this mantra uh, is used a lot of times by people who are going through a phase of deep uh, physical misery or disease or uh, incurable uh, uh, illness. Correct? I'm, I'm sure that everybody has heard in some or the other form in, in, from their friends or from somebody that they know. Just hold on. Just hold on. Sorry about that. So, uh, in this one, Can anybody uh, remember, does anybody remember this mantra? And who can yes. recite it for us? Yes. Mahadev Trahi Mama Sharnagatam Rutu Hare Chara Vyadi Pidyate Karma Bandhane. I think we missed out one word somewhere. <laughs> okay. Okay. So Om Triyambakam Yajmahe Sugandhi Pushti Vardhanam. Now, everybody understand Om Triyankamban means the three-eyed God, which is reverence to Lord Shiva. The three-eyed God in, in reverence here is symbolized that someone who can see the three tenses, the future, the present, and the past. That is why symbolism is for three-eyed. Sugandim, uh, here word is someone with great or sweet fragrance and who is like a fruit, Pushti Vardhanam, who will give me, help me in flowering my spirituality and will do away uh, with the bondage of death. That's a sim base, very simple and summarized version of what this mantra means. Correct? Is anybody uh, with me on this? Or would like to add something on it? No, this is fine. The explanation is good. Thank you. So, there is a usage of word called Sugandim. Om Triyambakam Yajmahe Sugandim. Why Sugandim word has been used? Anybody who is on the path of spirituality or good health or has risen will smell of, of a very high divine form. 
sugandham so what everything when we are our body is in the most physical form our sweat also smells like a rose that's the symbolism and if you are fall sick our our body our odor of a, of a of a excretion of our mouth of our uh, of a sweat will become of the bad odor so sugandham essence aroma has a great significance in your physical well being so whenever a mahamrutyanje part is done there is great care which is taken to put essence sticks put dhatura and put different flowers to make the environment cohesive and beneficial to the person that is being done for does everybody everybody uh, understand what i explained right now yes yes manish never thought about that but thank you that explains a lot thanks so what i am what i am trying to do here is basically a lot of things that we do uh, can be uh, they have to understand why it is done that uh, this is a, a mahamrutyanje mantra in on a very subtle form can be invoked the moment your body is applied with a higher grade frequency essential or aroma yes do you agree yes yes so now we come to lord ganesha the lord ganesha is one of the most revered deity in the hindu mythology uh we all have worshiped him for uh, for his uh, um, benevolence and whenever we are worshiping him we would offer him with a sweet or we would offer him with flowers or fragrance uh but there is a very soft story which is written in some scriptures not all the scriptures would confirm to it but some scriptures that uh, lord ganesha was born out of the sandalwood paste of mata parvati when it, when she applied on a body does everybody know this yes i know this no i didn't thank you yes so, it's rubbing off from her skin that's how yes. it was yeah yes yeah. the sandalwood paste so he inherited this smell of sandalwood now sandalwood also is known for its grounding and very strong connect to the spirituality so in all the gods when when he is worshiped first is because he is one of the one who is grounded and yet looking at the future in a very sane form in a very composed form another part is when uh, he loves moda the the sweet dumpling that is offered to him and everybody has just gone through the phase of uh, ganesh chaturthi and the puja has some or the other way offered him a sweet dumpling uh, the moda now it is there is one of a story that uh, once uh, young ganesh ate too much of this moda and his stomach got upset now in order to cure uh, the the upset stomach of lord ganesh uh, the sages uh, made a uh, concoction of jasmine marigold lotus and hibiscus and when these concoction was accepted uh, the the stomach was restored so whenever we are worshiping lord ganesha his love and his uh, connect to these particular fragrances or these particular flowers is of higher reverence anybody everybody understood this part yes thank you so now uh, perfumes and, and cosmetics uh, um, 
are mentioned in forms of in Kalika Purana, uh, another uh, uh, old scriptures. Uh, now it talks about uh, the four values, how a perfume can influence us. It can influence us as per the Kalika Purana in form of how you do the Dharma, how you do the Artha, Artha Shastra in form of Kama and in, in form of a Moksha. Dharma, everybody understands? Yes. yes. Religiousness. And also the moksha. So they are closely related. Dharma and moksha is the next form is moksha. When you, when you attain to the divine. Then the physical form is the karma. The, uh, that is also understood. Now, earth, earth is the part of rules. The, the laws of the society is the earth shastra. Earth. So that also is also influenced by perfumes. If a city is clean, if a city is well governed, it will smell nicely. And if a city is dirty, not well maintained, would it smell nice? No. So do you understand it? In all forms, whether it is religious, spiritual, uh, physical uh, contact or physical well-being, the karma, or the office structure, the work, that environment that we, we, we are living in. If that is not cohesive, it will not smell right. If it is not in the right frequency, if it is not in the right structure, it will not smell nice. You go to somebody's house, if it is well maintained, it will smell nice. You feel you, you feel good energy about it. If it is not well maintained, or an office is not well maintained or clean, do we feel nice? No. no. So, so it is not when we are talking about the aromas or the perfumes or the essentials, these do not just mean. The oil, I'm, whatever I'm trying to say, repeat in different forms or different stories or different methods is enforcing that in, in every sphere, sphere of life, we are coming across in some form or the other, but we don't realize it. Now in the Vishnu Purana, which is basically Puran based on uh, Vishnu, there are particular trees which are given to different months. So it's a long, uh, I will just go through it if you want to. Uh, uh, the Sarja tree is for Ashwini Mantra. The Srivasa tree is for the Kartik Mantra. The Madhulika tree is, uh, or the, uh, is for the Posh Mantra. Uh, the Google uh, that we burn in our homes uh, is for the Chaitra Mantra, which is the most important mantra. Uh, Chaitra uh, Navratra are one of the bigger Navratras. Uh, Kartik Mantra is when uh, you have Diwali. Uh, Vaishak is another when the flowering, uh, the spring would come in. Uh, then you would like this Shilaka. So different methods of different forms of perfumes for different seasons have been mentioned in the Vishnu Purana. Now I will come to a very uh, next uh, one is Let's just to okay. Uh, okay. Now we come to the importance of aroma in Islam. Now, if anybody uh, uh, know uh, knows about uh, the Islamic uh, traditions, and if I'm uh, wrong somewhere or not able to explain things better, do correct me, because. I have little understanding on, on the religion, but I have little I have some understanding about the perfumes mentioned in the religious scriptures of Islam. It is said that uh, Prophet Muhammad uh, uh, said uh, things which are dear to him are uh, woman perfume and prayers. He also said the, the person who wears the perfume, let him apply it 
perfume is a way of honoring oneself and pleasing the allah with the good smell it is a sign of gratitude for the blessing and allah will bestow him the good fortune again coming to the point of cleanliness hygiene is highly emphasized in islam the usage of perfume is also recommended when it is the religious months when doing the friday prayers and also the the eid prayers and especially when somebody is venturing into a gathering of people in the mosque or uh, in a group now the word attar uh, which is also a uh, synonym of itr which is used in india uh, is derived uh, from the urdu or the farsi uh, language which means natural extract of or uh, essence from the natural uh, substance the the source can be a herb or a flower or a spice uh, it can be an organic source it can be also uh, forms of uh, different different methods are used to collect it now very important part which is the attar made uh, in the regions of uh, persia uh, or the middle east uh was made with concentration and they derived methods of uh improving uh the quality uh that oil based essence if done very well uh can uh, do not have an expiry date so normally people mistake that uh, oils are old uh, will get expired but it's a myth the oil the more it older it gets the the stronger it will become so ibn isna or ibasina is a persian uh, physician who is uh, given the honor of the person who worked on the properties of the attar now attar in uh, the islamic empire uh, was revered uh, at great uh, measure by the mughal empires uh, the city which is given great importance Uh, is uh, the city of kannauj in uh, northeast india where a lot of perfume factories and botanical plants were installed at the time of uh, the uh, formation they still exist and one of uh, very famous story is also uh, for jangir and nur jahan who was a connoisseur of itra uh, great uh, baths were made where uh, rose petals and rose water was used now another uh, very important uh, that we discussed in the first part when we talked about uh, in the previous session is when, now i'm coming to christianity that when uh, christ was born the great sages visited uh, the the heart where uh, the child was there and the child uh, family was given uh, particular oils uh, of myrrh and frankincense now frankincense has uh, through the scriptures has been associated for very high medicinal qualities and also qualities which are uh, rejuvenating and also very important in terms of growth or uh, nourishment now frankincense essential oil is a highly valued oil uh, also known as loban has everybody heard the name loban or frankincense loban is part of it yeah yeah it's a raisin derived from boswellia tree Uh, which is found in regions of africa and asia uh, it's got a very strong uh, aroma uh, and uh, throughout history it has been used especially the three uh, abrahamic religions have used frankincense uh, at all the religious places it's a great cleanser uh, of uh, home and uh, religion yes they burn it in the house don't they to ward off the insects and other things yes Because yes. I used to have Arab friends, and they do a lot. 
you Correct. know they used to do it a lot yeah Correct. So uh, the the uh, even the Romans uh, when they used to have their temples or political buildings, they used to apply uh, or burn uh, the uh, essence of uh, the frankincense uh, in that area to uh, ward off uh, the bacteria and to uh, rejuvenate uh, good health. Now it it is. Uh, in one of the old uh, manuscript which was found in the dead sea uh, it's an ancient manuscript uh, which was found uh, in the 20th century uh, there is uh, a special mention uh, in hebrew written in hebrew that and he will know his children by their scent mm. i am using a particular line in used in that scripture he will know his children by their scent now what is the meaning of this sentence is just a interpretation but interpretation made by uh, for the uh, religious reason is the holy father will know his children by their distinct sense or scent uh, which also represent good health and wisdom it's a metaphor for higher relig- uh, spirituality and also high genetic uh, well being is everybody understood what i tried to say here mm-hmm. yes yes again i'm reconfirming what is being written by different text in different parts of the world in form of how scent in physical form or in physical body matters to okay yes thank you so let me just a minute so it uh, when we come to perfumes even in the kabbala the judaism is is given a very high uh, importance uh, it is mentioned in the religious uh, text uh, perfumes are considered to be the gift of the gods a source of joy and pleasure and a means of connecting with the divine now these are all hebrew text which have been given in very simple text that i have deciphered here now the sifrot the uh, the religious uh, uh, ceremonies or religious schedules that are done uh, in the kabbalic uh, tradition they also mention certain perfumes for particular uh, ceremony so uh, the scent of myrrh the scent of frankincense the f- scent of uh, hood the scent of jasmine the scent of sandalwood the scent of musk the scent of lavender the scent of rose so these are all different scents which are which are certain uh, religious uh, i would not get into the religious uh, context just in order to give you the context of what that different methods different oils different perfumes have different significance but they all point to one simple thing is of well being and of high spiritual expression and connection to the divine mm-hmm. perfumes uh, irrespective of uh, what religion or the three brahmic religion that we mentioned uh, the judaism the is, is islam the uh, christian they all uh, 
talk about uh, elevation of soul attraction to the divine blessing and to ward off negative influences by usage of perfumes now uh, whether the sabbath or whether it's the uh, going to the church or going to the mosque or going to uh, uh, the, the temple the usage of perfume is always encouraged now uh, it is uh, also uh, noted by by different religious uh, bodies that it also balances and harmonizes our inner self as well so when we talk about the next uh, Uh, in detail about the fragrances of lavender the fragrances of rose then you will understand this more in individual forms is everybody okay uh huh so in now i come to uh, buddhism uh in buddhism uh, the bodhi sattva uh, for one of the reincarnation of lord buddha is Buddha Padam Sambhava. He is one of the highly revered Tibetan uh, uh, Buddhism uh, great leader or teacher, and uh, in his uh, honor, or he is supposed to be the uh, great Buddha for the usage of essential oils and aromas and perfumes. in his scriptures he has written great deal of uh, importance of using the essential oils the aromas for healing and purifying and uplifting the effects of uh, human mind and body now one of the great uh, uh, things that uh, buddha padam sambha has uh, written is about again particularly the the scent of sandalwood frankincense myrrh rose jasmine and lotus because they all are stimul stimulating or influencing our different chakra or the energy spots in our human body as per the buddhist uh, traditions the essential oils can be used in forms of diffusing uh, in a humidifier essential sticks in forms of bath in terms of uh, aroma on physical body atopically or on our skin but it is highly encouraged so one of the uh, things uh, that uh, the crusades uh, the crusaders brought to europe uh, after the crusades uh, is the know how or the technology or uh, the methods to make the perfumes from the middle east or the persia or the uh, ottoman empire and uh, the modern form of perfumes that we see which are alcohol based is the european version of the attar or the perfumes uh, the earliest form uh, it was used uh, in form with water uh, napoleon uh, is is also uh, reported to have used uh, certain perfume or cologne with certain aromatic oil from the orange tree the neroli oil the neroli oil is different parts of a tree would give you different elements a leaf will give you a different element a bark will give you a different element and the fruit will give you a different element so neroli is combination of bark and uh, the flowering so of the orange tree
So this uh, particular neroli or the neroli essential oil uh, from the orange tree has the fragrance of of an orange, is refreshing like a tangerine or a calming uh, fruity smell. But what is has extra ordinary about it is the antiseptic value of the essential oil. If you have cuts, if you have wounds, if you have burns. uh fungal infection uh rashes on the skin uh issues with the with the dandruff or uh, oil uh, essential oil of neroli can be used for application for these particular things very uh, important thing uh, happened in times of the bubonic uh, plague which swept uh, the europe in the 14th or 15th century is uh, there is a legendary story uh, about this these particular thieves which used to go and rob the remains from the uh, after somebody has passed away they used to bury uh, these bodies in the cask and they used to open these casks and take out the jewels out of them and uh, the when they were caught the high priest or or the uh, senior commander of that area he asked them that when everybody was running away from this bubonic uh, plague and everybody is dying what is the concoction or the elixir that you've got that you are not falling sick from this nasty disease and not contracting this plague so in order to be pardoned they were asked that we will give you pardon of uh, all your uh, crimes if you could tell us what is there in this particular oil so the legend of this thieves oil it is sold in europe quite a few places now uh but one the few things are common all the oil that are sold in in europe nowadays but which is only present to uh, the thieves oil is clove lemon cinnamon eucalyptus and the rosemary essential oils now today's uh uh form of aroma therapy is uh, that we see or when we are, when i am talking about is the resurgent form of uh, yes. this this lost art uh, the father of uh, aroma therapy is a french chemist called uh, rene morris has anybody heard the name no so there is a very interesting uh, story about uh, this gentleman that he was working with certain uh, chemicals and oils and uh, the lab where he was working caught fire and uh, he got burned and uh, he did not have anything to uh, apply or apply on the burn to stop the gangrene uh, that was forming on the, the skin but he had this bottle of lavender oil which was lying with him or had not got burnt and he somehow applied it what did this lavender oil did not only did it remove the gangrene from the infection but also there was no scarring on the skin wow so this is where he realized that there are certain beneficial qualities of this essential oil and then he started to work on it and he dedicated his life on the therapeutic effects of these essential oils from that time onwards first world war till the till the penicillin became main form of uh, medication aroma uh, took a major uh, uh, form of alternate or mainstream medication in that era so what uh, i have been uh, 
trying to uh, advocate or promote or explain is these essential oils are called essential not because they are needed or essentially needed by uh, by by the term essential these are essential because they have essential amino acid in the plants or oils which are essential in the plant always present in the plant that is why the word essential oil is used so are essential oils significance in scriptures the significance through mythology uh significance in uh, different uh parts of the world is uh, because of its therapeutic uh, and healing qualities so i have a question um so yeah. these oils were they just used externally or were they you know people used to drink them or what was it okay okay so uh, we are just uh, actually overshot the time so i'm skipping the greek and the egyptian uh, mythology part here i'm coming to the question that you have asked is that essential oils affect us not just when it is applied on our skin directly if it we are using a uh, humidifier so we drop a few oil yeah. in the humidifier the essence the smell would fill the room or fill the area with the fragrance yeah uh we would use in forms of the dhoop or the agarbatti or the essence sticks mm. similarly uh by the burning process the aroma will spread the area and we are inhaling it and it touching our our, our uh, skin and uh, our senses uh then there is a method of uh eating also like if you are if you somebody wants to uh benefit from the basil uh, uh qualities then he just doesn't have to apply the basil oil he can also eat a fresh yeah if somebody wants to feel uh, that he is feeling low uh, on a, uh, on a particular day so i always advocate uh, especially for mental mental fatigueness always eat a tangerine fruit so whatever it is being derived from is actually an an a living plant so we can always use the living plant in the real form so it's edible yes like you can you can eat an orange right you can eat yeah uh, yeah uh, uh, a lot of the essential oils that are, that are used uh, in forms but some of the ones like like uh, cl- clove or uh, the strong one they are very difficult to digest because they are too strong so for that it is always recommended that you first do a test because a test is because you might be allergic to yes. concentrate essential oil is a concentrate huh? of like i'll give you a perspective a 5 ml rose essential oil will require 5 to 10000 roses yeah so i do you getting the perspective yes it's very yes. strong yes. yeah the strength the strength makes a difference yes it's too yes. much for you like even with the marigold you can eat them long time ago when my grandma was alive this is years ago you know the yes. bits from the inside of the marigold it's got a really good property i don't remember it now but you can eat some of the petals of the flowers as well of different flowers yes. as well so a lot of uh, if a uh, uh, majority of our, you people are since you're living in in uk a lot of the uh, alchemists or the local uh, gypsy people in that uh, predominantly united kingdom used to use a lot of these uh, f- fragrances in form of gypsy like yeah. their flowers uh, junipers so these are all medicinal quality things mm. so their method european method of using these uh, aromas or concentrates was mm. the blend of alcohol mm. and where in the eastern or the middle eastern world it was on, from the base of a oil mm. so the medium or the carrier is different 
but the properties or the origination is the same. Same. So, like, I I cannot eat uh, ten roses, but if yes. I have a certain particular quality of a edible uh, rose oil, which comes from Morocco, can be taken in. So it's a it's a little difficult science to understand what can be taken. So in very simple terms, we can apply on the biggest human organ, which is the skin. And we can always always recommend it that you test it before you apply it on a bigger area. So, any questions? No, it's very informative. I know a little bit because I do batch therapy, and they said fruchsia is good for no geranium is good for me. I don't know how they derived that. This was abroad. I had gone on a holiday. Yeah. To the Canary Islands, and he massaged, and then he said geranium oil is good for you. But I didn't get the base of it. Why he said geranium oil is good for me? So uh, what happens is bark flower remedy uh, is a derivative of the thirty six thirty eight flowers. Yes, and which was uh, so it's a parallel to the homeopathy. No. So. The difference between again uh, modern uh, medication used in the West and in Indian subcontinent is that we still use the Ayurveda, which is still used in the original form, where they have taken out the extract and to to hold it longer and to hold its medicinal quality, they hold it in form of based out of alcohol. Ah, okay. So. You have rock rose, or you have a willow, or you are using uh, like uh, I also do come uh, 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 of bark flower remedy because certain psychosomatic issues or mental issues or psychological issues can be handled better with bark flower remedy because they have to do with your mental well-being. Mm. The same thing can be used in form of aromas also. So similar thing, but oil based is essential. I have a question: uh, Is argan oil an essential oil, and what benefits can it produce? Oregano? Uh, no, argan oil. Argan, okay. okay. Argan, so, argan, argan oil uh, is again. Uh, see again, uh, there are certain oils which are become they become the carrier oil, like a jojoba, almond, coconut, argan. They become the carrier oil hmm. because their medicinal quality is not interfering with some other medicine. They are. They are like okay. Let me put it. If you want to do a painting, you want to use a cloth which is white in color, so that mm -hmm. there is no interference of of. The, so same thing. Their base is not interfering or uh, influencing the properties of the other oils. So argan oil, in other words, is a carrier oil. Is more of a carrier uh, carrier yeah. oil. Then you can use it, of course. Like like coconut oil has its own benefits, but yes. coconut oil can also be used for that. So argan oil is got its own qualities, but can be used for uh, as a carrier oil also. Jojoba, same thing. Almond, same thing. So what good qualities are there of using uh, argan oil on its own? What benefits does it produce? See again, uh, it since it has got a lot of uh, vitamin E beneficial on it, so it's very good for skin and for hair. Mm -hmm. So the, these argan oil, coconut oil, do not influence much of your mental body. Mm -hmm. They influence more of your physical body. Physical, okay. physical. Yeah, yeah. Do you, do you get the perspective now? Yes, yeah. I do. Yes, thank you. So, like, uh, I, if somebody is making, uh, say, uh, at home, uh, he is making, um, say, uh, uh, a lotion, 
then i recommend that instead of making a lotion out of a paraffin wax use bees wax mm -hmm. because paraffin wax has its own issues because it comes from petrochemical background mm -hmm. there bees wax has its own beneficial natural added with the beneficial of the essential oils mm -hmm. Will benefit you three times to four times more, more than paraffin wax would do. Okay. Hmm. So, like argan oil will work better hmm. than using a uh, 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 hydrochemical uh, oil. sunflower oil or something like that. Yeah. Sunflower oil. Yeah. Or refined oil. Hmm. Yeah. But argan oil so, is sold quite expensive, you know. It's quite expensive to buy. Uh, if you buy pure, see, argan oil, there, if you buy pure, pure. Anything. See, okay, my my point is, anything that you buy, which is a derivative of a natural product, hmm. will not be cheap. It will not be a three pound no. item. No. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so, so if you, <laughs> so if you, it is it is too good to be true. It is probably not true. Yeah, it just gives a name. Because I've been to the factories where they derive the oil out of the, you know, the the fruits, and uh, it's quite See, expensive to buy it from there. Hmm. Uh, uh, all essential oils are diluted. Like I always recommend that you always yeah. dilute your oil whenever you're applying it topically on your skin, because yeah. some the potency of these oils becomes so strong that if I were to give you in a concentrate form, it will burn because there will be too much of reaction. The reaction. human body is not today's term. We live in urban areas. We don't live in the jungles anymore. Oh. Uh, genetically, we are very weak to handle natural product. Yeah, we are very sensitive, aren't we? Mm. Uh, plus, uh, one of the great methods uh, is uh, of using any of the essential oil is uh, always use in form of a diffuser first. Well, that is the most subtle form. Like, mm. okay, I will give you the most simplest method. If you are doing a religious ceremony or you're feeling low of energy, simply <laughs> do the three things: camphor, lavender, and rose. Camphor, lavender, and rose. Sorry, can you say the first one again, please? Camphor. Camphor. C A M. H O R. Kapoor. Like if you know Kapoor sticks, mm. it's used in the world. Huh. So. Uh, these have the broader spectrum, very large spectrum. The frankincense or the wood or the sandalwood are exorbitantly expensive. Yeah, the original ones. But these ones you'll still get cheaper ones, diluted ones, and they are they are equally good. They affect you on, on, on your mental level. They uh, affect you on, on a subtle uh, physiological level. They affect you on your physical level. Uh, also in terms of uh, mild psychosomatic pains. Plus very good for relationship in family. What, the Kapoor and that? that the last one you yes. say? Okay. Yeah, all three. See, uh, okay, I will... I will Talk in terms of the energy centers. When we are burning a Kapoor, it is invoking the white prana, which is the overall well-being. Mm -hmm. uh, it is spirituality. It has got to do with the Vishuddhi Chakra, the basic chakra, and the uh, soul chakra. Mm -hmm. So whole body physical and the uh, divine is all connected with Kapura because white energy. It is covering the whole spectrum. When you do the rose, it has got the heart chakra, the, the sacral. So it influences the family around you, the people around you, the physical body around you. When you do lavender, it is basically got to do with more of a uh, combination of uh, no, it's a combination of yin and yang. Okay. Male and female. Yeah. Perfect balance. If you were, when we, if you remember when we all the school or we were painting, you used to have magenta and blue, you used to make purple. Yeah. The perfect yin and yang, the perfect aura is lavender. 
when you have perfect yin and yang energy mm. so are you getting i'm not just giving you a a, a a thought which is driven by one school i'm trying to get you a synopsis of different schools different observations in one uh, simple method under one roof yeah very good very good yeah. could it be that could it be that if you have a certain condition using certain oils might not be beneficial for you uh you have to give me an example uh, no i i i'm just listening to you and i just just wondered maybe if, if there's mental illness and then uh, Yes. If you use a certain oil, it might have negative effect depending on what oil you use. Okay, uh, in uh, I will give you uh, say uh, somebody who is suffering from mild uh, anxiety or slightly okay. depressive in nature. That person normally I've observed with working with different psychologists, they tend to eat food. Which is normally carbo carbohydrates, Carbo. chewy. Carbs. Yeah. Either they will be overeating it because they have this mental anxiety, or they will not eat at all. But they yeah. all want to eat a food which is chewy, very carbs, and with sugar as well. Sugar, sugar. sugar they take a lot. Yeah. Sugar. Yeah. But if you are able to give them fruits, they will not have fruits. If you are able to give them tangerine fruits. They are, because natural fruits of tangerine nature are natural mood elevators. Mm-hmm. I'll give you a very basic example. Okay, you will understand in very in, in the simplest form. If you you all remember, if you were in part of India when you were growing up and you were going to the school for an exam, your mother or your grandmother used to give you a spoonful of curd and and sugar. Sugar. Yes. Why? to get energy okay that's a simple answer i'll give you the reason good luck. the good only luck. thing that only thing that goes to the brain is sugar or glucose mm-hmm. so the moment you have curd and sugar it's an instant rush of energy to your brain your brain is firing full cylinders uh-huh. so when you have a form of natural sugar Called the fructose, anything derived from mm-hmm. the sugar cane sucrose from uh, fruit is called fructose is instantly absorbed in your bloodstream and goes to your brain. Will give you mood elevation and also rush of energy. So by default, if you are having fruit, it is very difficult to be uh, depressed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. so much panelji and i'm you. very conscious of your time and which uh, we started late we ending late and you're very very patient with us so thank you very much for all this time and a wonderful integration we actually never thought this could be a beautiful history behind and we never put i think i i myself haven't really thought about where how beautifully aroma is connected to everything what we look around So yeah. thank you again. <laughs> thank you so very much. And thank you everybody. Thank you. Yeah, we'll share. I've it. actually I've actually formed a habit of burning aroma oils first thing in the morning. I have the tea light and I've got that aroma thing and I just I don't know this is something inbuilt. I wake up, I come down after my shower and I just burn that. I don't know why, but it so, gives a so lovely the, the three things that remember the oils that you have to be careful what you're using. Yeah. So try using lavender, yeah. rose, and yeah. kapoor only. Yeah, But, I use tangerine as well. I use tangerine as well, but I use different that's ones. Uh, tangerine, tangerine. Uh, you have to be very selective when you're using it. Tangerine actually charges orange. your basic chakra. It's orange, orange. Sorry, yes. not tangerine. Orange. orange yes, tang- only tangerine or or uh, uh, not orange. Because what happens is it will. If if you have somebody who's young in the house. Yeah. It mm-hmm. smells that a lot. You will become hyperactive. Oh, okay, and I don't have anybody young. I need so, to be hyper. Anyway, you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. 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 Thank you.
thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, yeah. That, 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 really that, you actually yes. really clarified my question very well. So thank you very much. It was about different oils and their benefits. And you know, thank you. Uh, what chakra does lavender uh, activate? Lavender. Uh, what chakra does it activate? Lavender. So, so lavender, I said, is a perfect yin and yang. So it elevates the only the chakra which are above this heart. About the heart. The the heart chakra. Yeah. The shuddhi, the ajna, and the shastra. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Oh, I'm sure in the coming weeks we'll be learning more about all this. But thank you again, Manishri, and thank you, everybody. Okay, bye -bye. Appreciate thank your you so questions. Much for thank, you so much. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Have a wonderful bye. day ahead. Thank bye. you. Bye. 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 Bye.